Hey guys, welcome to a very special edition of TFL Talking Trucks podcast because we're on location with a brand new, all new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. And we have a friend of the show and a friend, Sheldon Brown. Pleasure to meet you. So Sheldon, you are the chief engineer on the new Tacoma. Right, yes sir. So in this, uh, we like to call this a deep dive, right? Absolutely. So where we learn everything about the new truck, and this is very important. So uh, which truck are we standing next to here? Okay, this is actually our TRD uh, Sport variation, and actually this will be equipped with a uh, premium package that you'll you'll see as we go across the rest of the vehicle. Uh, but this is sort of mid, uh, little upper mid-grade truck. In our, and in it our also lineup. has three pedals, I saw. It does. And it has a manual transmission. Yeah, that was... Uh, uh, a, a project uh, of passion of mine. Um, I've held a couple of Tacomas and they've always had three pedals and we were worried that that might have to go away. Um, but we, uh, we wanted to make sure that we left that for our enthusiasts. So we've got some pretty cool stuff that we'll do with that. Um, we'll actually run that down into our SR grade for, and we'll pair that with a BD21 uh, rear differential. But for our sport enthusiasts, we, we actually kicked that up to our BD24 rear axle. So what does that mean? The, what do those numbers mean? Uh, that's the size of your, your rear differential. Okay. That's okay. right. So you're going to a nine and a half inch rear differential over here, which lets you have all that L4 turbo torque and power in that manual transmission. Sweet. So since we're looking at the truck kind of in profile, I think everybody wants to know, did this truck grow in size? Can you tell me, me about wheelbase and some of the dimensions of this truck first? Sure can. So let me just start really quickly with the sort of ethos of this truck, right? Tacoma is known for its iconic silhouette that has to do with this high lift rocker. So you can see that we've basically kept this really tall. We've tucked this rocker down. We've kept a really slim profile here on the body. And of course, we want to kind of keep this sort of compressed cabin look. That was the basis of it. So what we did, of course, uh, is we extended the wheelbase. So basically keeping the front wheel where it is, we've extended the rear uh, of this, uh, this truck about four, uh, the wheelbase about four and a half inches. So it's 300, um, it's uh, 330, uh, sorry, th uh, yeah, 335 or th 3350 uh, millimeter wheelbase on this one. And then when we go to our long, our long wheelbase, you get to 3685. To do that, we actually then, um, shrunk the front overhang so we're 902 which means we came back about 35 millimeters on the front so the front bumper that's okay. right exactly so we brought that back and then on the rear again we, we shortened up so overall the total truck bumper to bumper is actually identical to the outgoing truck it's 54 uh, 18 to the front license uh, sorry 54 16 millimeters to the front license plate that was of paramount importance because our customers say the same thing it must fit in my garage we've heard it a hundred times now while we increased the tread width uh -huh. right, so currently 1600 millimeters we move out to um, 1667 uh, on the truck without over fender what you're seeing right here is 1678 with the over fender so a slightly slightly increased tread width what we did was we kept the door to door the same so the front of the truck got a little bit wider but when you're trying to get out in the garage you're able to get out by keeping the door, the, the, the opening distance so customers can get in and out. That was absolutely one of the most important things. We could grow the, the wheelbase and the, and the tread width to make the truck more robust and sturdy, but we had to make sure that we kept garageability. That's cool. And also, it's part of the design, right? You can see kind of the wider fenders. Yes. And we're not even talking about the TRD Pro yet. Not yet, no sir. <laughs> we're still at TRD Sport, That's which right. is... So you have now eight grades. So let's walk around the back. Uh, sure. So I was trying to keep track because you mm -hmm. have a lot going on. You have SR, SR5. You have a pre-runner coming out. We do have a pre-runner. <laughs> you have TRD Sport, which is this. You have Limited, you have TRD Pro, and also the Trail Hunter. And don't forget about TRD RP if we didn't say that, sorry. TRD Off-Road. That's right. Right. That is our bread and butter. We do so have a- That's eight. We are making a truck for just about everybody. One of the core tenets of this vehicle was to make sure that we went by grade and by sort of, I'll say style. So sport is going to be significantly sportier. ORP, much better for off-road. So this is not just a, a sticker and wheel package. This is about actual equipment specification and I actually vehicle dynamic tuning. Gotcha. And this truck kind of, the bones of this truck, you have fully boxed frame, correct? Fully boxed frame. TNGAF. That's correct. Platform, That's which uh, is an acronym, but it basically mm -hmm. means it's related to the Tundra and Sequoia, right? That's exactly right. So what we've actually been able to do is we keep the actual frame silhouette the same. Actually, the pitch between the frame is identical. So we've gotten just a little bit wider uh, there as well. Obviously, we shortened up the frame for this particular 
uh, vehicle class. Um, but what we did was, I think you've heard of us talk about Dejima. So what we're able to do is keeping the same fundamental silhouette, we can reduce the thickness, and then in areas where we need a lot of strength, we actually have this laser welded uh, patch, and that allows us to give strength where we need it. So you'll see that across the frame. And we've got some good, you know, it's hard to see here because you won't be able to see it until you see the, the, the vehicle off the frame. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really paramount in keeping the mass down by using the same fundamental uh, frame platform. So now, Roman, who is my cameraman here, right. he pushed on the tail lamp button right. and the tailgate just opened. That's magic. He's magic. <laughs> But is there something on this side too? There is something so both, on both sides, that's both, right. So buttons on both sides, can I push it again? Please, by all means. And now the tailgate goes up. That's right. And what's uh, important, what's unique to this of course, uh, safety is always a priority for us. This comes with a Jam, uh, Jam Pro close and maybe what I'd like to show you right here are pinch sensors. So if you do happen to get something stuck in the vehicle, you can see the pinch sensor all the way right down here. Oh, this little rubber piece. That's right. Piece. So if you happen to be sitting here with your fingers like that, no problem, we got you covered. And if your hands are full, no problem. You can do that with your knee, it'll close itself. Bam. Or you can hit the button with or your you elbow, right? Or you can hit the right? button with your elbow, that's right. right. You can open, you can close it, either way, works both ways. And then you increase the volume of the bed. We did. Sorry, I'm using the actual hey, you know, and, and some people like to do it old school, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a little right, no old school here. No worries. So wait, you increased the volume of the bed as well? We sure did. So, How? well, we listened to a lot of our, what our customers had to say, and they said, you know, folks who wanted to run a tonneau cover found that some things they couldn't get underneath the tonneau cover because the bed wasn't deep enough. So there's a real fine line we wanted to follow between the ability to reach over, grab like a gas can or something out of the deck. Right? I can still reach. There and this go. is, by the way, composite bed again. That is a composite bed. Yeah. But this is actually a new material. It's the same basis, but we got a 20% glass fill in this, which has actually reduced about 14% of the weight of this, of this deck. Hmm. So, but yeah, so we, we set that high. Went out, looked at a bunch of things, Yeti coolers, domestic refrigerators, all the things that people want to put in their truck and they probably want to be undercover. So we, we basically about an inch and a half deeper, uh, increased the volume, increased the width a bit. Um, and actually we took, like I said, about 14% of the mass out. So it was a win-win for the customer. And I see 400 watt outlet here. This is not a hybrid. You also have the hybrid powertrain. We sure do. Um, and that one, you, incre you, you also have a high capacity inverter, right? 2,400 watts, yes, sir. Okay. And so uh, over on this side, we have, uh, we'll have uh, DC. So we have a 12 volt and we have two USB-C uh, type uh, connectors in there. So that's an option that's available as well. So on the driver side versus the passenger side. That's right. Here. So we keep our, our AC over here. We keep our DC over here. Never shall the two meet, but. <laughs> So we've got our, our handy storage box over here. You can see we've done uh, quite a bit here with our uh, different lighting. We have the, the deck lamps here. The idea, these are wide angle, so they pitch to and from. Again, tonneau cover on, you can still see under here. But you'll notice we also have our LED lighting up here that basically gives you overview. On the back of the cab here. That's right, exactly. Yeah. So that's also, this particular one does have the, the camera in the back, up in the chimsel. And that actually, while you're driving, if you want to check your load at night, you can just go ahead, hit that, turn those lights on, hit the view, and it'll show you what's happening in your in your deck when you're you know on the way back to from the, your Ike Scotland or wherever it is that you're. Or even you're Moab from. or, or Moab, yeah, yeah, wherever. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. So I want to look inside a little bit. Sure. How about towing? Yeah. Let's talk about payload and towing, huh? Sure. Um, so obviously, two-inch receiver. You got seven-pin connector. And a four-pin. You got four-pin connector. That's right. It looks like you redesigned the hitch a little bit as well. Hitch is completely redesigned, obviously. Okay. Uh, uh, we, of course, it depends by the model in the gray, but roughly uh, 6,400 pounds of towing, about 1709 is where we top out on our max payload. Uh, that, of course, varies by model and, and what you have on the truck, but uh, that's a, kind of our, our top ceiling point. So you've increased your payload. We have. I heard, I heard what you said, 1709 maximum payload. As far as, you know, you didn't specify every trim level yeah. yet, right? Well, when we come to, when we get you guys out and drone, we have everything finalized. We're ahead of our first production trial. So we have to make sure that all, we're, we're also surveying uh, the different regions. So depending on how we trick those out, we're gonna have to decide what those final numbers will be. So you increase your payload, that's good. But you did not go after like your competitors as far as towing numbers, because some competitors are almost 8,000 pounds or 7,700 pounds. That's right. What was the consideration there? Yeah, it's a great question. So when we set out to do this truck, we said if we're going to do something, we're going to do it extremely well. And when we looked at our, our vehicle segment, you know, we can, uh, once we get to about 5,000 pounds, we cover nearly 96% of what compact truck customers tow. 
And frankly speaking, when you start to chase these big numbers, uh, at least from our point of view, um, you're going to be giving something else up. And so why are we going after that? You know, if you're really gonna be ch doing 7,700 pounds or 8,000 pounds, um, our feeling is we wanna make sure that we do it extremely well. So this was part of our thing. We said, and you'll hear me say this a bunch, we're not chasing, this is not a catalog truck. We're not gonna chase catalog numbers. What we wanna do is a fully integrated, uh, well put together truck that is a, a balance between uh, its priorities. And so for this truck, you know, maximum towing is, is, not, uh, is not our priority. So, so what I'm hearing you say, if you wanna tow more, get a Tundra. That's right. Is that what you're saying, that's, kind of? That's pretty All much right. what I'm saying. Uh, Roman was pointing here, so yeah. you have in, in the hitch, what is this? Okay, so um, what this is right here is we'll have an integrated high lift jack point. Uh, actually, I, just to be clear, this, yeah. this one right here doesn't actually show it. Sorry, it's not okay. on this truck, but it will be. It's, okay. I can show it on these trucks, so that might be a better we'll one. We'll take do. a look at the Trail Hunter maybe right. uh, okay. as well. That's right. So you were thinking about you know, off-roading is a big part of this truck, right? Absolutely. So, so including those points that's right. as well. Oh, is that a disc brake? You noticed. Okay, okay. I'll so yeah. I, I was reading the spec sheet, <laughs> yes, Sheldon, sir. Yeah. and you had uh, different brake packages for different trim levels. We do. You, you had disc brakes all around. We you do. had leaf springs on some trucks. We do. And you had coil multi-link systems on other trucks. We do. Why, why so many variations? Well, you asked me a bunch of questions that I'll try to get through all the answers, but uh, variations. <laughs> variations. variations. Okay. Well, first and foremost, again, we want to make sure that we have, we have to cover a pretty wide range, right? Entry level truck all the way up to what we're seeing uh, in the compact segment is folks who are saying, look, I want all the amenities that we get in a full size pickup. I just, I want to park it in my garage, right? So that's a pretty, pretty broad range to cover. So we had to think about how to do that so that the customers, whether they're value uh, driven or if they're performance driven or if they're uh, luxury and amenity driven, right? So we wanted to make sure that we had a whole portfolio that matched that. So let's talk about brakes. You know, we started off again, trying to give good performance, uh, but also, you know, managing our cost and our, our lower or lighter weight entry trucks like our SR grade, yeah. you get a 16 and a 16, okay? okay. When you come up into the TRD series, uh, we obviously have higher tow ratings, higher payload ratings. We bring you up, we upgrade you to a 17 inch brake in the front. We keep the 16 in the rear. Then when you come up into like our one motor hybrid where you have all that power and torque, uh, we give you a 17 and a 17. So you, can, you have the power, but you can also slow it down. You can slow it down, that's right. Yeah, and talk about power really quick before we jump inside. There is a lot to cover, but, but yeah, let's open the hood. Okay, uh, sure. Because you have four different power levels. We do. Uh, and it starts with the SR, right? It's it's a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, correct? That's right. And then for the SR, which is kind of your base trim. That's correct. Oh, by the way, this hood feels lighter. It is. And in fact, uh, we talked about reducing the weight. Well, we used aluminum on the deck side outer, the mm -hmm. tailgate and the hood. So we took about 37% of the mass out of the hood. Uh, so make it a little bit easier for you to, uh, to install or to open, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have two settings, some a high setting and a low setting. We did. On the HUD. We sure do. So Tacoma, uh, the previous generation, the hood was, was ra rather heavy. And we found, uh, as we started to see a lot more, uh, specifically females coming into our market segment, um, they had said, you know, it's really hard for me to lift this high and be yes. able to get to this position. Right. So we wanted to make sure we covered folks from about four foot 11 all the way up to six foot five. Real simple solution. Two, two holes. Yeah. So if you got a little bit more headroom, you put it back there, it gets a little bit higher, a little bit more access. If you're a little shorter, it's easier for you to get the prop rod in. So the older four cylinder is gone. The V6 is gone. V6 now you have gone. turbocharged power and also hybrid power that we'll discuss. That's right. Right. So, and this is, this, this is kind of a mid-grade, I would is, say. This is what we call our core motor. That's right. Okay. Yep. The, 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 uh, 278 with the, uh, the, the three, six, the 317. That's right. So 278 horsepower, 317 pound-feet of torque, mm -hmm. and you have an eight-speed automatic behind it, or a, or a manual. That's right. This is, this one's a 6MT, but that's normally you're right. That would be a, an 8AT. Uh -huh. Okay. So what was the transmission choice? Because at first I was thinking, well, the Tundra has a 10-speed, so you yep. might put a 10-speed under under this truck as well. Yep. So we, we obviously we took a look at that. Um, but honestly, uh, diminishing return. Uh, when we start to look at the additional mass in the package and, and some of the things that we need to give up, especially some of the, the ground clearance, and uh, honestly, the 10AT really doesn't give us a lot more benefit. We found this 8AT really covers uh, the entire range that we need. We have a really good gear ratio that we can spread out. And I will tell you, we were talking a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. we have dramatically improved the drivability of this truck. So I think you're gonna find this thing is an absolute treat to drive. Uh, so no yeah. matter what transmission. No matter what transmission, on. that's right, yep. Okay. If you wanna talk about the, the manual, there's some really cool stuff that we did here too. 
So it's actually, we had to change the bell housing, right? So it's not the same uh, manual 6MT that we did before. Uh, we've added a couple of things to it. The first thing we added was the IMT2. So that's the Intelligent Manual Transmission 2. Well, let's go inside. And okay, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Sorry, so let me close the hood. There you By go. the way, it's been raining on us the entire time. <laughs> that's right, exactly. So if you're listening to this and, and wondering why are we in the hurry. So this is our, our integrated handle. Okay. So for folks who want to try to get in, you just grab right here and pull yourself right in. Jump in. Thank you. So before we mention the, look at this, six-speed manual transmission. Before we mention this, uh, immediately I already feel like I'm sitting in a new truck. Why, why is this? Great, I'm glad you noticed. So okay. first and foremost, um, we took a look. One of the things that we heard from our customers was that they didn't like the sort of, I'll say, the flat seating condition. So we immediately raised the heel to hip ratio uh -huh. by 30 millimeters, and then we moved the roof up 30 millimeters to, to follow. So effectively, we're sitting you upright a little bit more. Then the second part of that is, of course, adjustability. So our overall stroke in, out, up, and down is significantly improved over the outgoing model. And then last, to make sure that you can be perfectly comfortable, mm -hmm. vertical height adjustability on all grades. So six-way manual height adjuster as well okay. as eight-way power. So everybody gets This the truck position. has a power seat. It does. I just started the engine. I did put my foot into the clutch, so I put the, pushed the clutch through, but I didn't have to do that, right? Uh, usually we ask the clutch and, uh, clutch and brake for this to, to start up, because we got the push start here. Oh, I gotcha. All right, so that's one thing you'll notice, the key is gone. Push start right. all the On way down. On all grades? All the way down. Okay. I've noticed something else, by the way. We talked about towing. Yeah, absolutely. You have a brake controller on the right. We do. Yeah, it's right here. That's right, absolutely. So when, when you get our tow package, that comes uh, standard with it. And you may have also noticed, especially uh, on all grades, we have manually adjusting headlamps. So that's available oh, so, okay. all, all the way down that. to SR grade. I, I remember, I remember the, um, the older Tom Tundras had something like this. That's right, exactly. So if you are towing and you got a little bit of tip up in the front, no problem. You can bring your headlights down, you know, not blinding the folks on the road. And that's standard on all grades. Gotcha. And then also I've noticed the color scheme. Yeah. The color scheme. We're really excited about this interior. This is one of my personal favorites. When we get into the TRD grade, uh, basically we have three, three uh, colors. We have this uh, sort of ice cap white. We then have this um, uh, anodized blue. And then of course we have the sort of, uh, I'll call it the gunmetal gray. Uh, this is really meant to give this expressive look of, you know, when we, when we did design Tundra, Tundra was about sturdy and, and making things feel tall and strong. This was about dropping everything and giving this big, broad strength along the, the center here. And this is what's supposed to sort of show that kind of connotate that wide feeling and then that low dash so you have good visibility. Mm -hmm. This truck is meant to live off road. Uh, that's what a lot of our folks like to do when they get these trucks. So we wanted to make sure visibility was a, was a big, uh, a big uh, factor when we're doing our design. I'm looking at the hood sitting here in the truck, mm -hmm. and there is a hood scoop, but that's a non-functional, it's a design element. Correct? That That is a design element, that's okay. right. Yep, that's right. Um, it's actually wildly popular. And you know what, um, With the, we're taking our, our air now from the front of the, uh, the truck, so uh, we did look at trying to do something functional in that area, but honestly, uh, it actually negatively impacted our aero performance. It actually caused turbulence inside the engine. So it is a little bit of truck jewelry, but uh, we have a lot of folks that well, really like it. We also have like a, almost like a raised, um, in intake on the trail hunter as well right we Almost do like a snorkel that's exactly right that's yeah. right we have a side air intake desert that we use <laughs> could right. it be called desert air intake you can you can call it whatever you like how, but about, I, how about hawaiian <laughs> air intake? there you go that's because right because it's it, the sky has opened up roman oh boy the uh, the sky well, how about it's, the drive modes yeah, yeah, let's talk about okay. that. So first of all, let me just tell you. Mm -hmm. So the interior, the overall, it looks completely, there is nothing in common with, at least from my initial standpoint on the design, it, it looks completely new. It's completely new. Um, I think uh, the one thing we may share with Tundra is this right here. Uh, but yeah, obviously it's all brand new. So uh, the upper console here. The, oh yeah. yeah, the upper console right here. Yep. Of course, we have our, our rear power window where they have the power back down window. We have a, a side sliding glass yeah, window down there. Sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. There it is. Bam. There you go. Get some air in there and, you got it. and then That's close right. it down. That's right. So and drive modes. Yeah, drive modes, yeah. Yeah. So this is a brand new drive mode control switch. And um, we'll talk you through on some of the other grades where you can see how we, we populate this. Very distinctive. This is your HVAC and this is where your 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 twenty one or your multimedia is going to be. This is everything that's gonna control your powertrain uh, and, and basically the drive mode. So we have this uh, new indicator that you can turn and as you can see in the, you have a three mode here, sport, normal, and then eco mode. And then just below it, you can flip this switch 
And this is how you switch it from two wheel to four high to four low. Right here. That's right. So, so just just like that, and then yeah. turn like that. So all the gotcha. driver controls here. You, once you start to know where all the parts. So this is the IMT2 that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So what this actually does, you know, not every day you want to you know row the row the boat all the time here, right, and row through all the gears. So this is uh, it's got an anti stall feature, and it also has an auto rev matching. And so when you put it in this boat, let's say you're on the way home, you're kind of tired, long day of work, just got off an airplane, right? You, you just, you're not really in the sport mode. You can just be a little bit lazy, kind of enjoy it. And uh, it, it takes care of all that. Great way so to- So rev match it for you in that mode. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. You want to take the camera and show the modes in the, in the dash? Sure. Yeah, can you go through it one more sure. time? It's fun because we have digital uh, yeah. gauges, right? That's right, yep. So you can see there's our normal mode. Yeah. Then you can go to a sport mode. Okay, when we change the sport mode, we're gonna change the pedal map and the EPS tuning, right? Okay. So this vehicle, you know, the outgoing truck didn't have electronic power steering. Obviously we've upgraded all those systems. Uh, and then of course you have your eco mode and that's just, you know, to help you out a little bit with the throttle and, and uh, be a little bit, uh, you know, fuel, fuel uh, economy minded. Um, okay. So those are your three modes. When you get into our limited, you'll see our five mode. Uh, and then of course, uh, that kind of rounds out our, our overall drive mode. So and the tier these Pro and et cetera have different modes as well. Now, That's right. Our second shelf in about eight yep. systems, and they're standard on all the grades. Right? All of our vehicles have the new uh, Toyota Safety Sense 3. So 3.0. 3.0, that, that's yeah. right. So there is a whole bevy of uh, new features. Uh, there's traditional lane centering, lane trace. This also, if you're in trailering mode, the blind spot monitor and the, and the lane change all works with the trailer. Uh, we have the trailer guide that will uh, actually detect the trailer and will try to size the trailer for you. Of course, you can program it in if, if you wish as well. Uh, you have presets. I think there's up to 10 presets that you can put in. Um, and then it has something that we're calling what is a driver assist. And so there's some elements here that will, for example, as you're rolling up, uh, say to somebody, it'll actually, as you start to lift your foot from the, the throttle, it'll actually start to slowly break the truck. Now, it won't bring it all the way to the uh, to a complete stop, but uh, or if there's a pedestrian, um, the lane change will actually sort of just nudge you. It won't push you out of your lane, but it'll start to sort of push you to the side. So it's kind of looking at giving you a little bit of heads up and it always alerts you and lets you know what it's doing. So you'll, you don't have to be surprised, uh, but a lot of great features. And we could probably, we'll invite you to come up and we can <clears throat> get you out and, and, and let you run through all of those. But it's uh, real similar to all the rest of the product that we're launching. Yeah, so it's in line with some of the other vehicles Toyota is selling, Exactly right? correct, yes sir. And, and, and I was reading about this, some of those technologies too, because at first it's a little bit complicated to understand all of that. It is. Uh, because there's a lot going on, but there's also adaptive cruise control, right? There's there is. lane centering, like you said, mm -hmm. uh, or lane tracing as well. That's right. Uh, so it takes a while to understand it, but the truck is not driving itself. It is It's, it's helping the driver. That's right? right. It's all driver assist, right? Yeah. We're not talking about any, any like a high level of autonomy. This is really meant for you to, you know, if you're, uh, you know, driving down, it might be a little bit windy. It's going to help you stay in the lane a little bit. Like I said, if it's, uh, if you're coming around, at, uh, say you're you're in the dynamic radar cruise control, and you're coming around um, uh, a tight turn. Uh, if you're with, the, if you have the driver assist, it may actually slow you a little bit to make sure that you can, because it's looking at what the what the radius is, and it's making sure you stay centered in that lane. One of the things that I think you'll notice and that you'll really like, um, if you drove some of the other vehicles, um, they can be a little bit aggressive sometimes when it wants to push you back. Um, the TSS3 has a, a, a nice thing in it where uh, once it really senses that hey, that's not what you want to do, it kind of backs off and says, I got it, you know. So what we're trying not to do- So you're not fighting the vehicle, basically. Specifically, the, the scene that we talked about the engineers with was uh, we're driving down and I've got a semi over here or I've maybe got a uh, vehicle uh, that's on the you know shoulder and I've got a, you know traffic over here. I want to give that person a little bit of a little bit of space and I don't want the truck pushing me back. So when the truck tries to push back and I give a, a, a nudge back, it, it backs out. Yeah, that's really important because some of the other systems I've driven definitely try to fight the driver almost, that's right? right? So that's, that's right. really important. I think you'll enjoy it. Roman, how are you feeling in the back seat? Uh, I'm good. It's, you know, it's got the scallop, uh, and so my head does not hit. Uh, and there's some pretty cool features back here. If you want to show, if you want to get out, you can show them uh, that the, there's new storage space under the seats. I don't want to get out. It's downpouring, Roman. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> I'm locked in now. Uh, hold on. Unlock me, Andre. Is it downpouring? Do you have a child lock? 
in a bolt? I think it was. Oh, it must have right. Well, yeah. Yeah, like that was not intentional. I apologize for that. Andres is done for. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. We'll talk about the back seat in a second. I mean, okay. uh, the storage sure. options. Of yep. course, you have cup holders. You have cup holders. I mean, there. we all must have cup holders. That's right. Cup holders here. They're designed, of course, to to fit a Yeti in here. And then, of course, the, if you want uh, these pop back out, you can put like a Red Bull type can in there. So they're they're meant to be adjustable. Uh, you got a little bit of a, a, a piece in here that you can pop right out if you want to clean this out. That's a little rubber mat down in there. Do you have like Easter eggs? Did you hide any Easter eggs well, in the windscreen or anything we, else? Of course we did. Because I remember in the Tundra, when you unveiled the Tundra, I was talking That's to right. Mike Swears. Yeah. And he winked at me. He wouldn't tell me where the, uh, the are you going to tell me all the uh, Easter eggs? It wouldn't be Easter if I went and hunted for <laughs> Easter eggs, would it? There's something right there, Andre. Well, right the corner. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> just like the new Tundra, there is yeah, on, a, dr on the passenger side yes, of the windscreen, right. there is a little Toyota trucks, and there's also Morse code. Okay. I, I learned this myself. I did not ask you Sheldon. Okay. Here, I can't get there. Here, let me, uh, let me zoom in, and you can kind of show it, because I can't really show it very well. So... That's right, down in that right corner, just there, in front of the speaker. Down there. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. So it's right there. Yeah, so there's little tiny fun things, right? There may be a and couple more hidden around here. JBL stereo. Yes, sir. Including, this how does that work? This is a passion project of mine. So uh, 2019, we're sitting around with the JBL team and I said, I want a, I want portable audio. So maybe this is actually 2018. Um, and what we wanted to do is something a little bit different. We wanted to have an active speaker in the system that was also portable. So a lot of other, you know, as it turns out, some folks have come to market ahead of us with this sort of portable Bluetooth speaker. The big difference here is this works as a center channel when it's in your vehicle when it's and here. it's charging. Yes. Remove it, take it out. You can pair it to your phone. We can pair up to 100 of these together. Uh, and so you can take it with you. It weighs uh, just uh, just a little bit over, uh, just a little over wait, a pound. Wait, did you say you can pair 100 of them? 100 of them. So you could have your own concert? You could have your own concert. Together? <laughs> So it was a really, that's right. Yeah, go ahead, pop it straight out. There you go. So it comes out. Now here's the great part. Let's just say you're working with this. Yeah, just a little, little bit over a pound. Okay. Yeah, about a little bit. It's about 500 and I think 80 uh, grams. Okay. Um, so the, the really cool part about this, of course, uh, JBL, it's IP7X. So that means it goes down to waterproof down to one meter for 30 minutes. Okay. Solid Need state. That today. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's really raining here. You can put it right in your pocket. Again, pair it just like a normal phone. Uh, the great part too is we were able to get this white listed with uh, some of like uh, like Spotify and others, so it recognizes this is not the toy the the truck. It recognizes this is a, a unique feature, so then you get the full app experience. Okay. Right, not the not the vehicle app. Great news is the JBL amplifier. Let's just say you forget and you leave it out or you leave it at home. The JBL amplifier will know if it's in or out, and it'll change uh, the EQ to basically make sure that you rebalance the sound performance. Oh, Sheldon, even if that's not there. <laughs> call your wife that's right. it'll, it'll never do that i promise okay. it won't call your spouse <laughs> no, that's right. okay exactly. that's good yeah right. you want to talk about this main screen andre because just go over that i know people have seen the tundra but maybe if they sure. haven't well this is huge i mean this it is, is a 14 inch screen in this case right it is so this is similar uh to in fact not similar it's identical to what we have in the tundra in terms of the of, of the hardware uh, we offer an 8-inch in our base grade, and then, of course, 14, uh, just like Tundra. Uh, maybe one of the unique fun parts is back here, we have a USB uh, port right back in here oh, on yeah. this side. Uh, the reason we did that, you know, sometimes your, your your passenger wants to charge, you can throw your phone right up in here, uh, it's right up there. A lot of people like to put a RAM mount or something up here, and they want to keep their cord, so you can plug it in here, and you can wrap it around this way, uh -huh. so you don't have to have all the fuss of the bus down here. Yeah. Wireless charging is there. Yeah, sure. So if you'll notice, um, on, the, on the manual transmission, because of package, we had to set this up a little bit. So the problem I always have when I'm in a manual is these always, when you bounce, so we've got a little little piece in here that basically uh, stops so it, Okay, let me use my phone here. Please, yeah, go right ahead. Because I have a 14. Uh, which you is larger. So, you know what I hate off road mm -hmm. when your phone shifts and you lose wireless charging, right? There you go. That holds but, it up. But nice it doesn't, and tight. it looks like it's not going to do it. And it's charging right now. There you go. That's really great. This is our new Gen 5 charger. Okay. So, it's got water charge range, faster charging rate. And of course, we've got our two USB C right mm -hmm. down here. These are 45 watt, fast charging capable. That's important. You need a lot more power, a lot faster for bigger electronics. What about in the back, Roman? Is there, are there more uh, ports in the back there as well? There's more USB-C back here. That's okay. right. Okay. So there's a couple different configurations depending on the truck. You can get a 12 volt. Uh, you can get a 12 volt with two uh, USB-C. You can get a 12 volt 
uh, with a 400 watt inverter, uh, and you can get the USB-C with a 400 watt inverter or the 2400 watt inverter if your truck is equipped that way. So you have 2400 watt here and 2400 watt in the deck. Okay, so just um, before we go out and get wet again, <laughs> uh, I wanted to go over the four powertrains because sure. we mentioned three of them lightly. So there's sure. a base power plant That's right. uh, for the SR. There is mm -hmm. the manual version, which is 270 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. That's right. For the manual transmission. Is that because the manual transmission has different requirements on torque and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, uh, honestly, the, the, the big difference there, uh, we had some crankshaft uh, hammering, and so we had to bring that down just a little bit. And that was honestly uh, mainly because we're using the existing 6MT. We have a different gear, uh, a gear package in there, but uh, that was something that we had to do there. So that's fundamentally, the, it's the same. It's just to make sure we don't have that crankshaft hammering. But a lot of people, you know, getting rid of their manual transmission. So there are, uh, you know, for the enthusiast, or if you really love that, that's there. Then there is the, your set, your core part, train that's right uh, which is three wait a minute 278 horse and 317 there, am i getting you, it, you got it. You, you did your homework. and then finally your your premium powertrain is your hybrid that's right uh you call it iforce max correct and 326 horse and 465 pound feet of torque you got that right it's a beast. that's the most torque other than diesels of some years ago yep in the mid-size segment wonder people kept saying give me give me the torque and the power of a v8 and we said we're going to do that for you but we're going to give you a better fuel economy so that is obviously our, our halo powertrain it is a hot fun hot fun to drive uh tons of power tons of torque 1700 rpm and you got all the torque that you want and uh and how does that work are you still sandwiching the electric motor between the engine and the transmission that's right that, yeah that? in fact we're using the same motor uh the same battery as the tundra the really the only difference of course is the mating to the adt bell housing okay and the battery would be underneath the rear seat then it will uh if it's a hybrid right it will oh okay that's I gotcha. exactly right. where does the rear locker live uh, does it have a rear locker? Uh, this particular one this is, is a sport, sport it's so a it sport. does not have a, a rear maybe locker. Maybe if, if it slows down, we can go look at the uh, white one over there, right? That's yep. the or problem. even the Trail Hunter, right? Both of those have rear locker and both of those have front stabbing. Well, disconnect. Trail Hunter is brand new. I kind of want to see it. Yeah, let's get over and take a look. So l let's go take a look. What do you okay. say, Roman? I say you got to let me out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to be nice and then you'll let him out, right? Roman is stuck. The rest of the video from here. Yeah, that's right. So we really uh, treated Roman like a child. I'm so sorry, Roman. Why don't you show him the kind of the cool feature? Okay, so, so it's 60-40 split. Yeah, that's right. Oh, wow, and you really scalloped this out. Three so times more volume than the outgoing truck. So, yeah, and, and if I lift this up. Yep, I can get over there and do that for you. I got it, I got it. You got it, okay. So, yeah, which is really good. So um, I've been going between... Film the back seat, that also does That's right. You can really flip the head, headrest down flip and then you can... Can you do this? Yeah, sure. So if you just kind of reach up in here like our typical headrest, go ahead and pull it up. It pulls down. You've got this little loop right here. Okay. Bring it down. It falls down flat both sides. You know that annoying center seat belt? Yes. If you don't use it all the time, we just tuck it right up in here, put it in there, hold it tight, tight. This one has a JBL subwoofer, exterior ported, so you get huge sound. If this isn't here, you get extra storage. Gotcha. So turbos, <clears throat> when we were thinking about how we wanted to develop them. Be careful of water. Yeah, exactly. A much larger turbo uh, could produce more horsepower. Uh, we wanted to, but we really wanted to focus on response. So we have a twin scroll turbo. Um, and we wanted to make sure that it was the right size, but again, where most people experience their turbos in the driving. But obviously we put together a group that was really looking at making sure that we nail drivability of this truck. Obviously there are some folks who uh, felt that uh, you know, there were some, some concerns that were expressed with the, uh, the outgoing generation. And so this was all about generating the proper drive force. So some little things that we were able to do, like use some of the big data, look at a bunch of different driver scenes. And we'll notice when you drive this, for example, we'll just hold the, hold for just a hair of a second, we'll hold the, the turbos at about 2000 RPM. Just so if you're on the throttle back off, you don't have this, the turbo spin down, it'll spool back up real quick. Uh, it just makes for a better drive experience. And overall, there you go. So we're looking at the Pro now, it's here in the Pro. Mm -hmm. um, is it only going to be hybrid max? It's only hybrid max, that's right. Okay, so you get you the, the most torque and the most horsepower here. 100%. So when you're talking about the turbocharger design, mm -hmm. it also sounds like you weren't chasing that billboard number, right? Correct. You know, whatever the horsepower may be. We, we, but you were after drivability. In response, that's right. Okay, I gotcha. Always having that power when you want it. And then, of course, when you pair it with this one motor. 
I mean, you just have at 1700, you know, RPM, you have all of all the power you're, are these, you want. Are these the high lift jack points? Right these here? are the high lift jack points, uh -huh. yes. And the other one will be back in there. Uh -huh, I We've see actually it identified now. that. Yeah. And you can see, of course, rear recovery points. ARB. ARB, right. right? That's right. We worked with ARB. This is a steel bumper. Oh, yeah. This is not, this is not plastic. Yeah, there's no plastic yeah. there. But <laughs> what you'll notice, we got our BSM. We've got our, um, our sonar. Uh, everything is fully integrated, completely works the same as the, the OE resin bumper. I've noticed that there's little details like little lights on the bed sides. So these are optional for pro. The, these are meant for trail hunter. And uh, of course, you know, like I said, they, these sure. share a little bit, but this is to give you when that light down and around the truck, especially if you think about the overlanding environment, you're working around the back of the truck a lot and that really helps you illuminate. So we've got, of course, the cabin lighting, we've got the, the footwell lighting, the overhead lighting, the rear lighting here, this brings in Rear cabin, why do, rear deck, sorry. Why does it have three shark fins on the roof? Just Andre, you're the first person that's asked me that question. Okay. And I thought everybody I, was gonna I, ask I me really that I really appreciate that. What, why, yeah. What's going on on the roof here? So this is optioned with a wireless trailer camera. So those two on the outside pair with a uh, receiver that you can put onto your trailer. Okay. And so then in our digital display mirror, you see what's behind the truck. So this can come from the factory with that option. It is an option, so standard you'll just see the one shark fin, but if you do want that option, it's pre-wired, ready to go for you. Sweet, and then um, the Pro is what, an inch and a half taller in the rear, two inches taller in the front. It's three inches wider than the standard Tacoma? That's correct. Okay, that's exactly and, 30, yeah. and 33s. And try not to turn this, I'm not trying not to turn it off this time. No Andre, start it up. All right, okay. let's, let's do the double, the dual exhaust okay, now. Is much more, uh, much more guttural. Yeah, exactly. We, we put a little bit more, a little bit more throat. A little I bit... heard more growl. Yeah, That's right. Absolutely. Yes. So, and once again, quick revving. So who does the splinter on this guy? This one is our Fox, yeah. right? So we're using the QS3 with the three-stage uh, manually adjustable, so you can get different, uh, different damping performance depending on where you're at. If oh, you want to. Good use, uh, Territory. Uh, these uh, RT. So Those Territory the... RT tires go, yeah. and almost 33. Is this, this is a 265-70R18. Yep. Is that a 33-inch, basically? Basically a 33-inch yeah. tire, that's right. Exactly, of course. Uh, that's probably one of our most aggressive tires in terms of both the tread pattern as well as the, you know, the sidewall uh, so you, if you're in sand. So you improved everything, including the ground clearance, obviously, yep. and also a pr approach, departure, is that true? That's right, all of those have been, uh, they're as good or better. Um, one thing you'll probably notice here, this is a unique over fender, obviously the water stance here, and of course this high approach angle, right? So this is a unique bumper for the, the over uh, the, the pro and the, and the trail hunter. It allows you to get that tire up on that obstacle. And there's a big skid plate I see. Oh, there's a big skid plate, yes sir. With the TRD writing on it, That's exactly right. And we go take a look at the Trail Hunter, you'll see actually, and it's available. This will also have a, a fuel, uh, pr fuel tank protector, but then we have full underbody protection on the Trail Hunter. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, let's, let's take a look inside, not okay. just because we're getting really, really rained on, yep. but because I want to see the inside. So just a, a word of caution here. All right, we'll try to make sure. Yeah, we're gonna have Whoa. to. Well, we can't. Let's not sit inside it. it yeah. Seems right. to be very oh wait, wait, wait. Yeah. This we'll is. Right. This is. I'm, I apologize. This the back area here is. Uh, where these are not production ready or they're not production intense. Well, so, so. But can you What's mention it? the seat oh, we'll, technology? We'll, we'll take you over here and we'll show you the seat. Okay. 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 So yeah. let's talk about here the front. First of all, huge bolsters. I can see that. That's exactly right. So this is our performance based seat. You talked about a uh, slightly different shape than what you'll see in the other trucks. This gives you a lot more lateral support, both uh, in the side cushion, or sorry, the side cushion here as well as in the seat cushion. But it's also kind of soft. It feels it good. Is. It's soft, really, really comfortable. You get the heated, you get the cooled, uh, the ventilated seats, so all that comes with you. Uh -huh. We get a unique, uh, obviously, a little steering wheel here that we carry up here. We get the TRD accent over here. Uh, you're going to like that. Sway bar disconnect. Is That's that true? Right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. So all these trucks will come standard with that. The Trail Hunter as well. It's optional on uh, all of our ORP lines as well. But Sheldon, where's the front locker? So we don't have a front locker on this truck. And, and like I said, we uh, we had it, we took a totally different approach. Well, I don't want to say totally different. But our approach was, first and foremost, we want to think about the tools that we have to off-road. The number one thing that we want to do is keep your tires 
in uh, in contact with the surface. With terra firma, right? That's exactly. That's okay. your best. If you want to get out of something, making sure four wheels are on the ground, that's your best bet. So then we started to think about, well, what do we? What can we do to make that better? Stabby disconnect obviously increases our 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 uh, our, our uh, uh, articulation about ten percent in the front. 15% in the rear. It's not that the rear gets bigger, it's just you utilize that full stroke, right? Uh -huh. Where you don't, gotcha. you don't tip before. So that was it. Now if you have our multi-terrain select, effectively that, that works like a, like a pseudo front locker, right? And so it's easy for folks to change out their front locker, very difficult for a stabby disconnect. So we said that's our priority. We wanna spend our money there. We can use the multi-terrain select to break that front, that front wheel that's spinning. And uh, it gives a little bit more mechanical sympathy because anytime you start to lock the transmission up, or sorry, lock the drivetrain up, you're given steering up, you're gonna, you know, you're, you're given something up, you're trading something off. So think about the different tools that we have in our toolbox to make sure that our customers can get out of anything. And, and of course, different modes, right? <clears throat> Crawl control is still there. That's right, down uh, Hill assist. descent control, That's all right. that stuff. <clears throat> That's right, and so um, you can see right here, multi-train select, again, you can do your drive modes. This will give you the, the three drive modes we said. Again, same switching here. Here's your tow haul mode, your DAC and crawl. This is your trailering uh, for, for trailer backup guidance. This is that view if you want to take a look what's going on in, in the back of the truck or at the 3D surround, uh, especially when you go in the uh, multi-terrain view. We've got the cameras in the front that show you what you're about to go over. We've got the cameras in the side that will tell you what you're, you know, hey, where your wheel path why is. Why are me and children standing outside and you're inside? <laughs> I'll try. Shall we walk over to the... Because uh, I'm the star of this podcast. That's right. <laughs> that's no, no. We, Let's, let's I'm, over, I'm kidding. Let's walk over to the, 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 the uh, seats. Yeah. I want to yeah. see the seats, Roman. All right. Because when I first heard about these seats, my, blame, my brain exploded a little bit. Okay. What are you doing uh, here? This is called our isodynamic performance seat. Okay. Uh, right now it's covered up and it's uh, wrapped up so that uh, it doesn't get wet. In this, uh, okay. Can we uncover it? Yeah, a absolutely. Bit? This liquid sunshine that we got going on for you. Yes. That's what I was told. It doesn't rain in Hawaii. There's just liquid sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> rain on the Hilo, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's talk about the seat. <clears throat> okay, so isodynamic performance. This really is all about um, stabilization of an occupant during that heavy off-road driving. So the principle here, anytime you think about, for example, performance athlete, or even if you like look at a cheetah in the wild, you know, chasing, the head stays here, the body moves and sways. So the idea is to take out the strain from the upper body. So what we have in the back here is yeah, where all the magic around. happens. You guys can see back here. We have two air over oil, um, basically shock systems. So this is just like a standard mountain bike pump. You can put it up in here. This one controls our two vertical shocks. They're down here and down here. This one controls our two horizontal shocks that you can see here and here. There's a pivoting joint on a spring here. So this allows the, the, the seat to move back and forth just a little bit down here and there's a ball joint up front. So what this does is effectively rock in this sort of gyro motion. Okay. And what it's able to do is when you're starting to get those big inputs from the truck, the seat helps stabilize it. <clears throat> That's right. You can put it more like highway or more. So if you want to lock that out and you want a perfectly rigid seat, you lock those out and it just performs exactly the same as another seat. And what does the air button do? Well, this is where, this is a Schrader valve. So this okay. is where you'll adjust the pressure. Okay. So we'll have a, uh, based on your weight, okay. um, we'll, the, the occupant weight, we'll go ahead and tell you what we think is the best. And then we've got these really cool little rings on here. So when you're driving and you can see how much you're displacing, you can then decide, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm displacing a lot more than I want. So you can either increase the pressure, decrease the pressure to customize it. So how do you pull this up? Like a bike yeah, pump? Sorry. Yeah, I apologize. These don't, uh, this is kind of a, it's a show model. This, is, this is a show model right now. This is not quite production. But the real Schrader valve, like a tire. Just exactly. Be. So yeah. you know what you're doing your, your mountain bike chalk? Yeah. Same thing right here. So I, I heard of suspension Will the come with a pump or no? It sure will. Oh, okay. There's an air compressor in the Trail Hunter, right? There is. We're going to go show let's, you that. Let's walk down there in this rain. Might as well. Okay. <laughs> well, we're already wet, so... Already That's wet. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Hey. For a dime. For a dime. <laughs> That's right. You got it. Hey. <laughs> so, go. don't worry about me. I won't melt. I'll let the, I'll let the guys take care yeah. of that for yeah. us. Thanks. Um, but... Okay. So, Larry wants to chat with Sheldon in a little bit. And we're, we got about 40 minutes left of sunlight. Okay. So, Okay. Um, and so then he's moving the. Okay. okay. And yeah. He's moving the TRD Pro over to next to the trail. Oh, great! Trail. Awesome. So. Yeah, we're almost done. Okay. Thank okay. you. Guys. So, so Sheldon, I've heard yeah. of suspension seats, right, for uh, road racing? Yeah. But but I think you took it to the next level. Have you considered the suspension seat as well? Well, you know what we really want to do in this is something that fits in the exact same safety package. This thing Let's bolts. This thing bolts right in uh, to the uh, existing seat. Same safety package for all the airbags, the restraints, etc. So what you'll be happy to know is that 
you know, you got nothing to worry about. It performs equally as well. Same age point, same total safety performance. And you could adjust um, it, right? Let's not fall down because this right, is very exactly. slippery. Why are we riding in the truck? Why are we yeah. walking? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good uh, question. We're, we're, we're trail hunting right now. We're trail hunting. Uh, we're trail hunting. I see it. That's right. There it's it is. in the meadow. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Roman, let's go in the deeper grass. <laughs> yeah, as you say, we might get a little more traction here. Um, that truck, no problem, but you know, our, our shoes, we got to be careful. Well, that's why you need the, those good years, right? The territory RTs. That's right. Uh, what was the idea behind the trail hunter? How does it? Compliment or how does it differ from the TRD Pro? Great question, uh, and I'm glad you asked because TRD Pro has always been our halo. It's about adrenaline fueled, high speed, having fun in the desert. Yes. We were finding that, you know, folks were taking it and using it um, to do off roading. They were putting a lot of load in it, they were uh, putting a lot of armor on it, and it was really kind of becoming this sort of, I'll say, utility vehicle. If we wanted to move it in a direction to be a little bit more performance oriented, we had to sort of pick and choose our battles, right? So this was an opportunity for us for this sort of outdoor active adventure. This is about going long distances in comfort, carrying a lot of weight and having a lot of like Under Armour. So you can see standard. We have our rock sliders. Rock slider. Yeah, this right to the front. Oh, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Half GVW all day long. Okay. Complete cladding. You can see, you can see our diff covers down there. You can see the fuel tank protection the whole way, uh -huh. a mid skid plate and a front bash plate. Partnering with some credible partners like Old Man Emu here. We have a multi-zone shock, so three different zones. Um, here's your lighting. Yeah, you can see it here right. on this truck. Comes down here about eight feet of, of coverage. And this is also a longer bed version crew cab, double cab. Double cab, six foot deck. It's available in the five and a half. Integrated uh, tire air compressor. Yeah. What's pretty cool about this, of course, too, you can go and pre-program it if you have a set. For example, if you go to the menu here. Is uh, it not powered up? Uh, we might not have it powered up, sorry. Should be. So you can set like a pressure for your tires, for example? For example, so there's two things. One, you can have, you can pre-program it. So if you're gonna run the same trail you wanna go down, it'll help you deflate the, the tires. Then you can also set it and forget it. So plug it back in, set to whatever pressure you want. It'll burn it up, it'll stop as soon as it's done. Get to those beers a little bit faster. Okay, so I so I you said TRD Pro is for faster running mm -hmm. and then Trail Hunter. If so, my first impression was it's also the payload was really important on this truck, right? right? Because That's you right. want to carry all the all your toys with you. That's right. And this is really built. So this is really the suspension is tuned now for that uh, for climbing or sorry for carrying that uh, that heavily laden. It's got all the the parts on it. So total payload you won't see go up because we've added so much weight to the truck. But the key point is we've balanced that. We've made sure we've got a wider stance and we've got it basically set up and tuned to basically perform. So when we run this truck, we run this truck at full GVW. Uh, we have the rack that comes as an option. We have the sport rack, which by the way, back. you can bolt this piece off buy the rest and you can make it a full rack and it bolts right onto this main piece. And right it's here. inside the rail system of the bed. Correct. Okay. That's right. Um, over here, one of my favorite parts, um, this was a, a kind of a passion for me as well, but you go look at, take a look at the fogs. Okay. So you've got your white fog. This is our, our performance rigid lamp. Yeah. And yellow fogs. That's right. There's a little amber detail in here that'll tell you what color it is. Oh, sorry. And, uh, what that really allows you to do is adapt to the kind of environment. Really dusty trail, right? We want to take that down, um, bring in this uh, sort of gold. So I would have loved to put amber, but you know, FMVSS requires that it's yellow. Okay. This is a pretty good. Sorry, I yelled amber. I apologize. No, it's okay. It's okay. Amber would have been. <laughs> I got excited. Yeah. Sorry no, about that. FMVSS and of course, you have your light bar here. It in the does. Grill as well. So this is very similar to the one that you see in Tundra. Yeah. But we got about uh, we got just a, about ten thousand. Uh, lumen coming out of that uh, almost twice this the throw. Intake, oh yeah, there it is. There it is. The Hawaiian air intake. That's exactly what that is for. Yes. You'll the notice desert air intake. if you want to go up there, have a look and see how we've uh, designed this one. And you'll notice that it actually pulls the air from the back. So, so we don't have here, the problem with here. the car wash. That's right. It's on the side, very cleverly yeah. packaged. So it's very, I would say, low profile. Exactly. So it's not sticking out, right? You got it. So there it is. Right, take it right through the car wash, never a problem. It's always our reverse 
Well, Andre, we, we need to wrap this up. Well, oh, yeah, Sheldon's on. time. He's been so generous yeah, uh, with our podcast. So, so, let me ask you, Mark, yeah. Andre's listening to me. Let me ask you the most important questions. Please. Which probably we're not going to get answers to, <laughs> but I'll ask. How much does it cost? Uh, yeah, well, coming soon. <laughs> coming to soon. a theater near you. And That's right. Fuel economy, <laughs> coming soon. Coming soon, yeah. Obviously, we're, um, we haven't hit our first production phase yet, right? So our first actual production trial. So these are really our, our first, we call them confirmation vehicles. Um, First time these things have been off of tools. So we got a little bit of development left, but uh, we're getting close. So it won't be too long before we let you know. And when do you think it'll hit dealerships? Uh, so we will SOP. Uh, we're going to have sort of a, a, a staggered SOP. Uh, so we'll start off with the main um, the main, um, the main vehicle will come out in uh, end of November, sorry, December time frame. Uh, and then we'll sort of continue to roll out the cadence after that. So the the Max, the iForce Max is maybe early next year? Yeah, early next year. That's and right. And we, if you remember also, we have two manufacturing facilities that, that build this truck. So we're going to launch the one, then we're going to bring the next one online, then we're going to start to bring the different bed and, and model configurations. It's a pretty a pretty, the, pretty extensive lineup. So we want to make sure we get quality And these are building right. facilities in Mexico, right, where the trucks are currently being built? That's correct. Correct? That's right. Okay. It's, Guanajuato, uh, it's in Guanajuato, which is in central Mexico, then on the west coast, uh, Baja. There you go. Absolutely. So you can drive out of the uh, factory and go uh, Baja racing just right turn there. turn right in and just roll right out. That's... Go on, stay there, by the way. <laughs> so, how does this look? So, OldTFL.com, thank you for joining us. This is a very ultra special episode of TFL Talking Trucks. So thank you for your time. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining us and supporting us as always. This is the all new Tacoma. Huge deal. Thank you. Thank you.